everyone, my name is Keely and I'm the owner and creator here at Soy and Shea and thank you so much for joining me for this soap making video. I'm really excited about this soap because I have been wanting to try this technique ever since it first started to appear on YouTube and Instagram and everything else. But I just could never find the actual tools to do this with and I really didn't have the time to make my own. But now that Lee over at Wickedly Goods is creating some pull through tools, I am going to have a go at making them and I'm really, really looking forward to this. I will leave links to her shop down below. She has got some awesome products out there, so go and check her out and she does ship internationally as well. But for now, what we're going to go and do is not make just one, but we're going to make two of our pull through soaps and one of those over on Instagram, I did ask which of the tools you wanted to see me use first, and I am using that one that everybody voted for. So let's go. The first thing I'm going to do is get my moulds actually prepared. Now I did order the end caps from Off Wickedly as well, and what you do with these, so I've got my PVC pipe here, I have got some... Um, paper or some greaseproof paper in there. I have just a small amount of uh, melt and pour. Just going to pour it around the edge. Make sure it's not too hot because it will melt the um, the material that these are made with. And I'm just going to push my PVC pipe mold down into it and that should secure that nicely on there for me. So I'm going to do the same with my other one here as well because I am going to do two soaps today. In fact, I need to go and melt my little bit of melt and pour down a bit more, I think. Alright, so now we have got our bottom on there all nice and secure. The pull through I'm going to use is this one. I put it out on the Instagram stories. I put up all 10 of the little shapers that I got, all the pull through tools I got, and asked which one that you'd like to see me use first. And this was the one that got the most requests. I am also going to do another one today. I'm going to use this one um, because I'm really interested to see what sort of pattern I get from doing that one there. But first of all, we will do this one. So I'm going to just slide that into my PVC pipe that fits nicely with that lining. Um, we've also got this little funnel style thing so this is going to hold that in the center and it's also going to allow me to easily pour my soap down through the middle here. So now that I've got all of that ready to go I am going to go and grab my oils. We're going to mix them up and then we're going to add in a bit of color and the fragrance I am using today I am using fresh raspberry. In the past this one has always been a well behaver for me so I am hoping it's going to be well behaving again today. mix with the stick blender because I've just got a feeling this is probably a little bit too fluid but we will give it a go. It is my very first time of doing this technique so it's a bit of a learning curve for me today. The colours I've got, I've got my um, titanium dioxide. This one here is a lime spider from my micro obsession and this one is called red and I have got it from a new place, well a new place to me called Magic Mica. I've been using a couple of her micas now and I'm really really impressed with them. Get really nice colour, they hold really well in the soap as well. What I'm now going to do is pour my soap batter just in lots of little layers down the middle, trying to get it so it's going to go straight down the middle of my funnel here. And I'm just going to alternate with the colours as I pour them in. So we are nicely filled up to the top. Let's see how much mess I make on the next bit. What I'm thinking is I'm actually going to stand this in my bowl just in case. What I'm now going to do is pull, gently pull on that tool and just let it 
drag all the way through those layers of colour and we should get a really nice kaleidoscope effect. Oh, that feels really weird. <gasps> oh, that didn't make as much mess as I thought it was going to make. So let's get that out of there. I really don't want to waste any of that soap. So I am going to just scrape it off back into the top because that little end piece will become a sample that goes out to someone. <gasps> this is going to be so lovely, I think, once it... Um, once it's all set up, what I'm going to go and do is get all of this equipment cleaned up and then I will come back and I will do the next one and I'm going to be using a fragrance on the next one called Peach Capri. the rest of that out in a minute let's get this one pulled up and out for anyone that has bought the PVC um, pipes from off of Wickedly and if you bought the large I used 750 grams worth of oil in here so just in case anyone else has got that you know how many oils you need to make to make the size um, PVC mold that she has supplied. So let me get all this cleaned up. Alright, I know a lot of this soap is actually going to get um, cut off when it comes time to cutting it, but I figured if I put all this extra soap on the top, it means that I get um, less wastage of the actual pattern bit. So I've got all of those nicely scraped out there. Really, really keen to see what this peach one comes up like because I really liked that particular pull through. Let's grab this one here. I am going to leave these a sit overnight and we will be back in just a moment and we'll get them cut open and see what we've got on the inside. These have now been sitting overnight and we get to unmold them and take a look. And I'm going to go with this one first. Let's get this cap off the bottom. Oh, I'll say it's easier said than done, but it has come off. And now I'm going to somehow push. Oh, that's it. It's just released. Push this one out like so. <gasps> that one's looking good. That one must be the peach. I actually can't remember <laughs> which one I poured into which mould. So this one must be the raspberries again. Just going to gently keep pulling on that cap until I feel it release. And give it a bit of a push. And you will undo the, um, the tape first. We're not fighting against that tape there because I can feel that's a little bit more secure than what it was on the other pipe. All right, push and it's coming out. Oh, look, we've got another bit of tape at the top there. Let's undo that piece. Oops. And push that one out. Yep, that one's the fresh raspberry because I can see all of that green. All right, so let's get this paper off. Let's find the beginning. Just going to give it a little bit of a pull and just Oh, I really like how that is looking already. So excited to get this one cut out. Oop, the paper has stuck in that melt and pour. Don't forget we're going to cut that bit of melt and pour off at the end. The melt and pour that I actually used was some... Um, bits that I'd used in another soap that were just like bits of off cut so it wasn't getting used. I figured that was the perfect way of using it up. Look at the colours in that. Now that's rather interesting because the colour that I used in this was red and look how orange that has gone. So 
just be wary if you are buying the red from um, Magic Mica that it might not go red. That is very, very interesting. All right, I'm going to go grab the cutter and then we're going to cut these up. All right, so we have got the cutter. I'm going to try and cut these so that they are the, um, the bar size that I would normally do. So we'll get it lined up. We definitely want to chop that melt and pour off the end here. Oh, I'm not going to get quite what I want. What I'm thinking is just need to bump that down just a little bit to make sure we cut all of that melt and pour off now this one here this is the fresh raspberry and that was the pull through that we used so let's cut on through and it just bump it down a bit more so we get a lot more of that pull through in that first bar and then this one here I'll end up cutting up a little bit more and using as sample pieces to go out that is cutting beautifully. So we've ended up with two, four, we can't see, two, four, six, eight. We've got nine full bars of soap. So let's get this end, ooh, let's get this end piece off. <laughs> I couldn't hide that one from you guys. So let's pull. How pretty is that? I am absolutely stoked with that piece. Oh, that side's, oh wow, that is so different on that side. Um, it's almost like you're looking at a hibiscus side on and there's the kind of the um, stamen that comes out the middle and just a little bit of color. It's like a side on view of a flower. That is really, really interesting. That's a really nice size as well. Um, I'll just go and pop it on the scale and see how big that is. So it's not a bad size. I've got, at the moment, this is at 117 grams. So I would say by the time this has gone through its cure, it'll come down to about 105. So it's 2.5 centimeters wide, and this was a three inch or a 7.4 centimeter um, mold. So really, really happy with that piece. Let's take a look at the next one. Oh, wow. I really like this because every single soap is just going to be so uniquely different. This is really, really good. I have, you have no idea how long I have wanted to try this technique for. My flowers are a little bit lopsided by the looks of things. Oh, I like that one. That's a bit more centralized in the middle there. So I obviously need a little bit more practice at pouring it down through the middle. I'm still really surprised at the color this has gone. Um, like I said, I put red in there. I'll show you the mica. So this is the mica that I put in to that. And you can see it is very obviously orange in the soap. And it's kind of an orangey red in the tub, but it's that has definitely not come out um, come out red and I am very heavy handed with my micas so I don't think it's that I didn't use enough in there I just think that that is the color this mica goes but it's still a pretty color I'll just have to remember that for any future soaps but you watch next time I actually want that style of orange in a soap and I put that red in it'll go red <laughs> So they are the cuts of the fresh raspberry soap. Really, really impressed with how that one has come together. With this end piece here, what I'm going to do is just pop it onto my chopper here and try not to chop my hand. We'll just cut a couple of sample pieces that will go out in people's orders. All right, so that is the first one done. Let's now cut into peach capri. At least it's the right colors for peach. And this was the um, the one that I used. And this was the um, shaper that really took my fancy because I was really keen to see what it was going to do. I'm gonna get that just shuffled down a little bit more just to make sure all that melt and pour comes off. Let's cut on through and see what designs we've got on this one. All right. So that is very, very interesting there. 
love the colors. Love, that's really weird. You see how each and every single one of those petals just has that colored tip. That is really quite, oh wow, it's really quite cool. That is absolutely amazing on that side. Really, really like that. Let's grab this next one. So love that pattern there. And that looks like an orange segment and almost like a little um, a spiral staircase as well going down through the middle. That's awesome. Really, really like the effect of this particular one. Let's grab these next two here. Oh, that's awesome. That looks like a, um, you know, when you see the fossils and you've got the spiral shell ones, that's kind of what I'm getting from out of that piece there, especially on that side, one of those fossil spiral pieces really really liking how this one has come up too loving both of them oh <laughs> it's such a surprise when you open each and every side i think that would have to be my favorite piece so far out of this one love 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 let me see if we can get up a bit closer look at the fine swirl and detail in the very center of that soap that is absolutely amazing. It's like it's repeated that pattern all the way through into the middle. That is stunning. Oh, and the other side of that one, that is just gorgeous. It just looks like an orange segment that you could use. It's a shame it's not consistent all the way through. Otherwise, that would be how I'd be making my orange pieces from now on. That is just... oh. Beautiful, that is just a real perfect sort of pattern on that side. I am so super happy with these pull through tools. I can't wait to use some of the others as well. I'll definitely be doing that. I've got a couple of ideas for soaps using them as well, so we will see how that goes. I hope you have enjoyed coming along this journey with me as I used the pull through tools for the very first time. If you did, why not leave me a thumbs up and any comments down below. And if you are interested in these tools yourself, there is a link down below to um, Lee's store, which is Wicked Lee Goods. And go and check out what else she has. And so until the next video comes out, which is another bonus video this week, I hope you have a good one and I will see you then. Bye.